This morning, November the 9th, we're going to talk with Terry Winfield, more uh, popularly known as Doc Winfield. And having been born here, Terry, you got lots of background about early years then in Nipigon. And then we'd like just to talk about your business because it was one of the more popular businesses in town. So give us some background about your family first, your mom and dad and where they came from maybe. Uh, my dad was from uh, the Toronto area, as I remember, and uh, my mother naturally was born born here. I think she was actually born in Rossport to um, my grandmother um, and grandfather Gentiles, and then they ran the Obilio Hotel. Uh, thinking back to um, Nipigon was such a hustle and bustle. Right. And uh, thinking about the old days, uh, at the far end there was, I think it was Pankovich's shoe, uh, yep. shoe repair. Yeah. And then uh, Jusilov's department store. Yeah. And then Hanala's barber shop, skate sharpening. Uh, Town, who I think it was his name, and his son. And that's son. one of the oldest little buildings along the street. When I look at old pictures of Everett, say. Eh? That oh yeah, that's been there. Still there. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, he used to cut hair, and his son Alan and uh, sharpen skates. He had a, sh uh, oh, a skate I'm sharpener in the barber shop, and then um, after that was the there was a house back the, in the in the yeah. next lot, Pankovich's maybe. That rings a bell. Um, and then the Normandy was another one of the hotels. So was that bake shop still there when you were a kid? Cookie Dampier's family. Oh. And they had a bake shop. No, it was in uh, there. no uh, Hanson's Bakery. Oh, Hanson, right? Was right. was there, and then the Canadian Tire first right. store was there. Oh, and then the Norman. But no, I don't remember. Oh, Cookie uh, family. Cookies family. Okay. Yeah, I mean I know. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Normandy Hotel, and then uh, I think Salo's was there for a while. Nick Salo had a, a store. Okay. Coming this way, and then uh, at one time. There was a finance company in um, next to what is now the general store. The okay. little part where Winnie's is oh, okay. was a finance company. I think that's where it was. <laughs> and then... Um, so where the general store is, am I right that that was Shuck Smith's jewelry store? No, I think uh, Shuck Smith's was next door. In that little little place oh. where the fine oh, they changed over one. the years. Oh, okay, I just remember that name. She Sheena, yeah. I remember uh, the daughter Sheena. Yeah. Right. Then, um, then it was LeBlanc's restaurant. Right. The big right. one, which changed a few names. There, there yeah. was uh, a couple of department stores. What was that department store that? Oh yeah, I bought a record player from that place. I forget what it was. It was out of uh, the West. And right. The franchise. Well, I forget what the name of it is. Well, me too. <laughs> they had they had one of those stores in Dryden or something. Yeah, I there was that. a few of them. Yeah, you're right. Coming down this way, there was uh, after that it was the theater, which has always been there, and then uh, Hanson's Paint Shop was the way when I remember in that little building next okay. to the China Garden. Yeah, Sears or Eaton's too, though, right? No, Eaton's was on this side, Glenna. Okay. Um, well, no, before before uh, Verna LeBlanc built the LeBlanc's restaurant, I remember as a kid, they had a snack shack. And that might have been in that little place next to before. And then she bought, she uh, the built the new, re the oh, big okay, restaurant. Snack shack. But it was a bus busy place, uh, the, uh, the snack shack. Mm -hmm. And then and actually the pool room and uh, the bowling alley. And then... Um, there was a, a, a restaurant there too, and I think Mrs. Johnson worked there, and then there was Kelly's. Right. Yep. And then um, besides Kelly's, there was Eaton's Takeout, Mrs. Eaton's uh, phone order in that little building. And Mrs. Uh, Willen, Martha, yep. ran it. Right beside China Gardens. Yeah. Uh, and then, there, of course, it was it's changed hands a few times. I think. Uh, Hamo Mackey had a, yeah. a little clothing store yeah. out of there, and then um, Jackie Oya had a her tax income tax income place tax. out of there. Yeah, and uh, and at one time Beth the Chico sold uh, Christmas yeah crafts out of that. Little That's place. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and there then was, there was a man from Red Rock um, who had 
games or pool or like and people would go there and have coffee and and play uh, chess forget, or yeah. something. Like we that. used to sell uh, electronics at one time too. Oh, okay. Was that the guy? The I TVs, I think, uh, the odd TV. He sold in there. I'm not I'm sure. Not, I don't know, but I remember there being out something else in yeah. that place was a lot. And of course, Chris. Well, Chris right. was there. Yeah. 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 We used to uh, kid because we didn't go to the midnight shows. That was a big thing Sunday nights, eh? Right. And we always come out and walk home and go and buy Christmases. Crip would be looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we come down here. Of course, the, the taxi stand. Yep. The Swajlas. And you go around the corner. I remember as a kid, the fire truck used to be in that building. Right here on. Uh, oh, did it? Yeah, I remember uh, before it moved down to the old town office. Right. And then there was the. Um, Where did Ruby Martin work around there? The Dresswell. Dresswell. Yeah, and uh, there was also the Bell Telephone where the operators yep. were. Yep. And I think that became the library for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, the. Um, Laundromat. I think Mr. Thompson originally built that. Right. What was there before that? I wonder. I don't think nothing. Was, oh, I don't. It must have been something. In the liquor store, and then coming up the other side, my dad had a little office there because yeah. he was the uh, BA oil agent, and then there was the Ovilio. There was that great big building before the. Ovilio. It used to be. Um, a restaurant or something, or uh, yeah, that. I that. remember reading somewhere, but because uh, Rosalie and Barbara Brosh had bake shop in there for a while. Yeah. It didn't last a long time, yeah. but they had a bake shop in there. Now that you mention that, Colette had a store in that other building beside my dad. I mean, oh. my dad's office was only a small, and then there was that. And I oh. think at one time it was a, a classroom. I think there was a, a class in there oh, for a okay. while. Okay. And then Colette had her um, sewing. sewing. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Okay. And then the Ovilio, and then the Nash, and then um, at that time it was Zechner's. Yep. And besides Zechner's was the bank, like right in between the Nash and uh, and Ze Oh, and Zechner's. Where, uh, yeah, where um, the drugstore's last aisle was. Oh, okay. It was actually the bank. Okay. And then Mr. Zechner made a deal uh, uh, with the bank to build a new bank at the end of the street. Oh, so he built that and they leased it. From That's him. yeah, and uh, <coughs> I've been there a while. And then, of course, Zechner's was uh, grocery store was there, and in the basement they had the hardware. I didn't remember that, but somebody else mentioned. Yeah, that. they had hardware, a little bit of hardware. We used to go on Sundays and play with John, and <laughs> so that would I, have been the only hardware store. There wasn't one across the tracks at that time then. No, because because oh, because uh, uh, Zechner started the hardware store. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it would have been Marshall Wells, I think, originally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, then there was the bay, and of course the bay had at that time. I remember the groceries. Everything. Yeah. yeah. And then the post office, the town office, and that's where the fire truck ended up. I remember. Yeah, that was there when I came. Yeah, as a kid, every time there was a fire during the night, we'd get up and look out the window. <laughs> you know, imagine all that in the back of there was the town office garage. I mean, the town works department garage. Yeah, the, look at the stuff they have today. Yeah, where and the they, hydro was there too. Yes, wherever did they put all that equipment in those days? Because that was just that one. They never garage. had a yard. They never had a town yard. No. I don't remember. No. I just think of that now, yeah. the equipment we have of today compared yeah. to then. And then at the other end was the Nipigan Inn. Yeah. And uh, the bank that was uh, built. Oh, no, I was thinking that Bill Wade. Yeah. He used to, yeah. In that little building. He had an insurance office. Yeah. But I, I think he, did he used to work for the town too one time with uh, Mr. Wheeler? I, he didn't when I was here, no, but no. I, I just I, I, the I'm, I was confused business. about that. I don't know how, you know, yeah. if he just, he must have come from somewhere. He did just insur insurance. Uh, yeah. For some reason, I thought he worked. But then around the corner, Mr. Miller was insurance too, eh? Mr. Miller, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there was a two insurance people. And I think yeah. Mr. Manella at one time sold insurance, did he? Uno. Maybe, yeah, it sounds familiar. I, I mean, that's the, uh, yeah. 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 But yeah, it used to be hustle and bustle. I remember uh, on the weekends, 
uh, the taxi drivers, because we had three or four different people there, double parked out here to get pick up groceries for for passengers. Oh. Yeah, really. Delivery, was, eh? Well, it was so busy they couldn't get a parking spot. Oh wow! That's how busy downtown was. Yeah. Yeah. But but I as a young I spent a lot of time at, at my uh, grandma grandmother's uh, hotel. I started at a, a a young age filling up the bar the cooler the beer fridge. Right. And uh, in those days there was no motels, so the hotels were actually the, had rooms. Every hotel had had to have a, that was why you they were called the hotel. Right. So I used to carry a, there was a lot of seniors traveling in those days. So I used to actually be a bellboy, I guess, and carry <laughs> suitcases up the stairs for them. Yeah, because there was, you know, there was no motels yeah. anywhere. And so do you think there was actually a lot of people stayed here going by? Like oh, yeah. I can remember uh, my aunts phoning around to try to find somebody a room. Okay. You know, like, uh, do you have any rooms that we have somebody here? Yeah. So it would just be the three hotel, four All hotels on the street that had rooms. Yeah. 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 Wow. And I think there, were, uh, if I remember correctly, there was um, something in the um, Liquor Control Board Act. They also had to have a dining room. That's why all the, I think the uh, everyone had a dining room, whether they operated it or not. <laughs> but the the because uh, okay. I know the the Normandy had one. Yeah. And. Um, at the Ovilio, they had a, a very small one. The Nash had quite a big one. And so in the beginning, on that little, right in the front, yeah. there they had that little dining area. Yeah, I think it was rented out a couple of times for a restaurant, a yeah. little restaurant. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But there was something in the uh, in the mm. um, laws that you had to have, okay. you had to serve meals, I guess, into weren't getting a, a liquor, liquor license. license. Yeah, it was it was busy. I'm sure. You, if I may ask, what year did you come? 59. 59? Yeah, it was busy then. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't get a, like, a parking spot, the theater, where if it was a good, in those days, a good show, it was hard to get a, sh and you couldn't get into, uh, when you became old enough to go to the bar, you, on the weekends, you couldn't get into bars. <laughs> Let's face it, I, I just even remember people saying, that so-and-so seat in the bar, don't sit in it. Yeah, they had yeah, just they were, selected yeah, seats. They had their own seats in the bar. <laughs> and I remember yeah. I was talking about seats, Glenn, uh, over at the the cafe, uh, when Mrs. Kubisto uh, ran it, some of the older Finlanders, uh, if there was somebody at the counter in their seat, they would actually stand at the and wait till like, they, they left, <laughs> so that they would come and sit down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but it was busy, 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 busy. Yeah, and it's interesting how it was always on this side of the tracks, even though there was businesses all there. Because oh, yeah. when Roy and Clara were here yesterday, Manila, we were talking about what a busy corner that was oh, over yeah. there with the stores. And the hardware store and the pop shop and that yeah it was a busy little place too as well as over here it was yeah, yeah. and you had car clock motors oh, selling yeah. cars yeah. and you had the uh, girl act service at, uh, right on the beside corner. the legion and then you had freightways behind that that's we right the, that's so where it was yeah two busy sides of the street and then on this this court well the, um what was in if some did somebody mention what were um Marsha Wells was. It was consumers. They said it was consumer, right? Eh? Yeah. yeah. And then across the street, there was a little uh, grocery uh, confectionery store. Remember six. Well, before later. that, I'm trying to think of uh, maybe Lato, not Lato. I forget. Okay. And then there was a rooming house where the bank was. Yeah. And then the cafe, and then there at the other end was West. West oh, Grad, West Rag. so yeah. busy, busy places, yeah. In Wright Motors, Edmar Motors, or no? Yeah, yeah. Wright was and it? Edmar's both, mm -hmm. eh? yeah. Was yeah. Edmar across from Wright? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Originally? Yeah, that's where I burnt. It was, and then he moved up? Uh, many moved over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, up the highway, yeah. So how did your, your dad came here, did he come here to work in the oil business? Oh, no, no, I... I I'm not sure. <laughs> he might have worked uh, on the water uh, with um, in uh, in those days. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and then he became. Uh, he he was a BA oil agent 
ever since I remember. And um, because he had his tanks over by the arena, right? No, right over here. Oh, he had his here. And then they had to move them. There was Esso, there was a Mr. Cameron, Esso, right. and my dad, right, were right here across from uh, Jackie Mahoney's right. here. Yeah. Uh, and then they were, they had to move them or, or do something, I forget, because uh, Esso was the last one there, right? Okay. After, after we moved, there was Husky down by the plywood mill and my dad. Okay, well how come I keep thinking that there was oil tanks over where um, the, hydro the hydro yards are? Well, maybe that was Husky? I don't know, but maybe, I remember uh, maybe there that, being uh, tanks there. Uh, maybe that was Husky. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but for some reason they had to, they either had to do something, maybe fence it all in, mm. but the B, uh, BA moved down by the plywood mill. Oh, okay. On, uh, between the track, you know, on, by the road. Yeah. Going yeah. to the old mill. Okay, I didn't remember them being down there. Hmm. Yeah. And then... Um, so your dad was... So they had all those different oil companies, so they serviced a whole wide area around here? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Well, of course, there was no na no gas then. Right, but your dad went a long way to service customers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be, uh, Red Rock? Oh, I think Red Rock, yeah, and, and Nipigon, and um, the bush camps, the boats out at... Mm. Uh, I remember going with them out to Orient Bay. They, were, the, they had those tugs up there that yeah. worked on the... Oh. Okay. Yeah. And um, some construction sites. Hmm. I remember one time going to. At that time, it was um, put down by Par Machine, but you know the road out off Cameron Falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember going with my dad uh, in the oil truck to Par Machine, and <laughs> and it was so muddy that they had to hook up a, a, a what is it a D8 tractor yep. and pull the oil truck down to the site. How did you get back up then? They pulled us back out. It was so muddy, like I couldn't believe it. I was actually scared. <laughs> but we made it. So, yeah, because yeah. going down it would be heavy if it's loaded. Then. Yeah, yeah, but still, yeah, the mud was two feet deep and it was just so... Solid. Who would have been down there then? I, like I can't remember what, what the site was, what they were doing. For it must have been a, a fairly big construction if they required an oil truck to fill up would have the been machinery. Old. The tracks, or the sea, I don't... Uh, or the... Um, bridge? Br no, the towers, I wonder. Towers down, like, kind of go across down there somewhere? I don't know what they were doing then. Oh, I yeah, but you're right, that. the bridge is down there, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I often think of those oil trucks when you're right, winter time and springtime, and they're loaded. Yeah. They're pretty heavy. And then once once natural gas came to town, we lost... the. Uh, the, the uh, eventually we lost the oil uh, trucks. Right. Uh, we were, there was Esso, like you had Husky and yeah. BA. Hmm. Yeah, in Texaco too, Mr. Clark. Oh yeah. Uh, Les Clark, I think Just was his think name. Just think how many there was, eh, in those yeah. years. Wow, wow. Did your dad retire when that was finished, or did he go into something else? Um, no, he. Uh, I guess he sort of semi-retired, and then he went to because uh, my brother used to work with him and drive the truck, and then he just took a side. He used to work for uh, Mr. Grogan, who ran yeah. um, Great Lakes uh, Lumber okay. and Shipping, and he had some uh, jobs there. Okay. And then um, his health wasn't that good at the, uh, so he was slowing down a lot and that. Right. So. So did your dad build the house that? Uh Yes. That they lived in, he did uh, it. On the corner there? The, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was a big house to build, I thought, in those days. Oh, she, yeah, when you think of it. it had, you know, it was uh, upstairs, there was three bedrooms and a bathroom, and then down in the main floor there was uh, uh, two bedrooms and a bathroom, and then in the basement there was uh, a bathroom with a shower. And Wow. Yeah. yeah. A three-bathroom house in those days was quite modern, 1947, Jerry. 1947, I think, of the house. I remember the tag on the door. Wow. Yeah. Well, how many in your family then? Your siblings? There, there was uh, my mom and dad and uh, three girls and three boys. Wow. Also six. Yeah, okay. three wow. boys, yeah. Okay. Who's left now? Uh, there's uh, Gordy in Thunder Bay. Uh, my sister Mary Pat in Thunder Bay. My sister Kathy in Elliott Lake. 
And I'm the only one left. <laughs> I used to hear Mary Pat's name quite often. I haven't heard it for a long time. I often used to see uh, things on Facebook from her. Oh, I haven't seen her for a long time. No, yeah. yeah. Her, um, her husband had a, uh, is, uh, had a very bad stroke, so she, oh. she, they've been, okay. their life's changed. <laughs> so what did Gordy do for a living? He, in the paper mill in Red Rock. Oh, right, right. And, and Mary right. Pat worked at the hospital in the early days. Right, right. Kathy made she just uh, she was in, involved in uh, education, um, not teacher, but uh, what would you call it? Like, Educational assistant. Yeah, okay. something. So everybody's retired now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one left, and uh, you know, out of all that, out of all the family members, relatives, you know. Uh, uh, Joanne Co and I are the only genteel family oh, left. Only, only. Of course, no. There's I shouldn't say that because we're also related to the Stockos. Right. So, uh, I, but then I guess there's only Tony left. Tony Stocko in town. In town, yeah. 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 So out of a whole bunch of relatives, there's only right. th you know. That was a big family, really, when you look back, eh? Hey? Oh yeah, the Stockos and. Yeah. Uh, the Gentiles and the Winfield. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lots yeah of, for sure. I remember uh, my grandmother being Italian. You know, she always had to have, you know, a big gang at the hotel. Right. For a spaghetti supper. And at Christmas, you had to go for Christmas. You know, she, right. she used to say, I don't care where you go after, but you're coming for Christmas dinner. And then she used to invite people that didn't have anybody, you know, right. like... Um, I remember Oli Steen was always there. Oh. They, she always invited him. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a couple other guys, I don't remember their names, but they were just single guys right. that had no family, and she didn't right. make sure they came. That's good. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so now get in and tell us about your business, how you ended up. In oh, yeah, business. we forgot to go there. Yeah, oh, God, go there. <laughs> tell us how you ended up with that. Well, let me see now. Well, back in the uh, mid 60s, you know, it would be late 60s, after I was finished playing hockey, I went to uh, uh, Bobby Grogan and I and uh, Bobby Markowitz went down east to try out for a hockey team in, in Owen Sound. Right. And uh, we didn't make it, so on the, we came back, and at that time, uh, Alan Kelly, who owned Kelly's menswear, was looking for somebody. So I went to talk to him, and uh, he hired me. And I spent a few years there with him, and then he decided it would have been, uh, I, the dates I'm not exact, the late 60, maybe 69. And I worked there for a few years, and I started, uh, then he decided he was going to leave the business. So we talked about it and talked about it, and uh, finally he decided that, uh, he, well, we decided that he would liquidate his inventory because there was no way I could have managed to do right. it. So he did, he, he liquidated it. And then in 1975, I started, at that time, Doc's Menswear, which would have been up uh, next to the uh, China Garden. Right. Um, I was there for, I forget how many years, and then eventually the, the building, some, he's, he was trying to sell the building, but I wasn't interested in it. And finally, somebody from Thunder Bay bought the building. So um, Vavone's, the Liberty Cafe, which was owned by the Vavone family, was for sale. So I went, came down and talked to Mary, Mary Vavone, and uh, we settled on a price, and I ended up buying that. Mm -hmm. So we, we uh, with the help of some local friends and that, we uh, fixed it up and up for a store. Upstairs there was eight rooms. I think eight eight rooms that the Bravones used to uh, live up there, right? People rented Rent the room by the up. yeah, and uh, I never I, we didn't use the rooms because the insurance. If once you start renting, if you have some people living up there, the insurance was outrageous, didn't they? Mm. So I, I stayed at Doc, calling it Docs, but eventually I went into ladies, right, and uh, kids footwear, right. So the name changed from uh, Doc's menswear to Doc's clothing and footwear. How'd you end up with the word Doc? <laughs> you, knew <you> <laughs> you knew I was going to ask you that. <laughs> well, okay, so um, 
Back in the day, we used to have a camp, a family camp at, uh, at Gurney by the Gurney. So we used to spend the summer there. Like my dad used to come in. We, we'd move up when school was out, and oh. we'd only come in. My mom would stay where we'd all stay there. My dad used to commute every day. So one day, my mother, um, Ray's lived down at the end of the road. Yeah. And um, of course, my mother would always go and visit. So this one day, my mother was down at Ray's visiting, and my brother and I, Gordy, were, I don't know, building something, a treehouse, I guess, or a fort or something, and, and he got hurt, and I bandaged his head up. Okay? <laughs> so then the next time we came home, we, uh, we ended up stopping at my grandmother's. And Father Muldoon, who was the priest at the Catholic Church, he used to have supper at my grandmother's quite regularly. So we went walking in. My brother went in first with his bandage all around his head, and I came in a, just a few steps behind him, and Father Muldoon looked, and he said, well, here's the doctor. And ever since then, oh, it's stuck. Isn't that <laughs> ironic? Yeah, right? and like, like, that was, I was only maybe 12. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool idea. Huh? Yeah, everybody. You often wonder how people get those nicknames. I think my dad even called me Doc sometimes. <laughs> no, well, a lot of people didn't know my name. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you, though, I think that people um, associated quality clothing well, and footwear with Docs. I, I still get people saying, gee, I wish you I wish you were still open. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, and I know everybody appreciated the fact of your footwear and and, and uh, the mill having an oh, agreement. Oh, right there. Yes, yes. So they could buy them and they would be deducted off their payroll, right? Yeah, it, and it, it became a meeting place, you know, like people, yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Sale, he used to stop two or three times a week on his way back from the mail. You know, just to come in and say hello. Right. Uh, right. Walter Smart used to stop on Friday nights because his Verla, his wife, was shopping at Saunders, so he'd come in and spend a half an hour. And he, you know, Walter always had a joke. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. Uh, you know, and then we had the coffee gang, the guys that would come, right. you know, stop in, and it was like a hot stove leave in the back. And the other thing you did was the um, uh, for. The grooms or for weddings, oh, right? Rent, uh, uh, tux rentals, Rent, yeah, yes, that was, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes that was more of a headache than. Uh, a... <laughs> I bet, especially the shape they came back oh. in. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, one guy I brought imagine. it. I always remember one person brought it back in a green plastic shopping bag or garbage bag. And he had been thrown in the pool in uh, Thunder Bay, <gasps> and he just rolled it all up wet in a garbage bag for three days. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> what are they going to say? <laughs> oh wow! But yeah, it it was a it was a lot of fun. So, how many years can you remember about? Did were you in business there then? Um, well, I spent four or five years with Kelly's Menswear, and I opened in. 1975, and I closed September the 30th, 2005. 35? Oh, wow. 70, 30 years. 30 years, wow. Yeah. So you had several employees. Oh. I always remember going in there. Oh, lots and, of young girls. Uh, young... But Barbara, I always remember Barbara. Isla oh, yeah. Was well, well, Barbara, those... uh, I was yeah. with Barbara with Kelly. So she worked yeah. for Kelly long before I did. Yeah. And then. Um, um, after that, uh, maybe maybe Muriel came, Paquette oh, then, Muriel. Okay. and then uh, then jeez. Uh, That's uh, okay because you like to went through a lot of people. Who's the works at the bargain shop now? The blonde Finlander. Paula. What's her name? Paula. 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 And then Paula was with us oh, with okay. Muriel and I. But over the years, I had a lot of a lot of uh, students. Right. You know, I had uh, I had the Willen girls. I had uh, Maria Grove Gentile. I had Susan Stenlin, Lisa Lisa Stanzel, and she now Ashlyn. Oh, okay. Lynn Lynn Nemoff. Right. Yeah. So, when I'm thinking of the quality of the footwear and that, did you have one or two or just one deal, or like the person you dealt with, because, or did you have a big variety of where you got your 
Oh no no no! I, we, yeah. You actually went. We went. Um, oh, uh, I went with my friend Mike Moore, who had a, a clothing store in in Terrace Bay. Yep. So we used to travel together, and we would go to shows. Okay. So you're actually dealing with like the, there there would be thirty or forty reps. Oh. Salesmen. Right. And uh, um, the uh, you know you dealt direct. Oh. Okay. So you you had to pick and choose. Right. The only thing is, you had to you had to do that six months before the season because otherwise you wouldn't get it. Anything, right? So you're always six months ahead, and uh, you know, and there was a lot of the travel. Some from Toronto, right? And then uh, Winnipeg. I never went to Toronto. I think we went once to Toronto, but it was too big. It wasn't. Right. Yeah. Just think though, and you're saying you had to order six months ahead. Now with COVID, think how people are having to order. Oh way ahead and yeah. hope that they get anything right they I have really to tell changed. you a story about the, the uh, there was two old tra uh, there was an old traveler well an old an elderly man uh, used to come from Toronto and um, he was on the road so long that he used to come up by train in the old days and he actually used to sell Mr. Everett and he told me the story one time you know he said I used to sell Mr. the train used to stop he says in, fr in front of the station he said, Mr. Everett would get on, and I'd have to show him, open my suitcase, and try to show him my goods. But he said, you know, son of a gun, that guy, he, all he did was try to sell postcards in the, on the train. He <laughs> said, I could never get him to. <laughs> he said, I spent all that time on the train, and he said, I couldn't get him to. He was selling, he was in those days, still selling, one day on by, a, right. by the handful. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, because you wonder where Everett did got his goods from. I mean, I don't think he went to shows. Oh, no, no. They used Just, to come. They, they used, used to, to come, come around. To oh, he, uh, the gentleman's name was uh, Len Prout, and he used to come on the train originally, he told me. Wow. Yeah. And he always used to tell me, Doc, he says, I'm going to give, like, he was on the road for a long time, and he, he says, I'm going to give you some advice, and I want you to remember it. He says, nothing stays the same. It either goes ahead or goes backwards. And if it goes backwards, you're in trouble. <laughs> oh. Because now they likely order online, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Unreal. I, I, I sometimes think of what if I was in business during COVID. Well, no, you'd never survive. No. 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 There's still some not even yeah. getting their head back on their feet. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. Yeah, for not, sure. It's just uh, no. You had a, a real ride. I remember my mom. God, my mom bought oh, a I remember. winter jacket from you. And Herman just commented the other day and said, "Boy, I wish we still had that jacket your mom got from Docs because <laughs> it was really light. It was the puffy kind, eh?" And, okay, I'll tell you. The, talking about jackets, uh, on my grand opening in 1975, I, I had a draw. And um, I think there was ten. Some of the suppliers gave gave stuff, and uh, and uh, so anyway, one of the winners was my good friend. I didn't pick up the ticket, Bobby Grogan. Okay, so Bobby comes up, still comes up, and we go fishing for three or four days with uh, our other friend David Nuttall. And he had won uh, a hunting jacket, not you know one of the more like a hoodie, right? And uh, with a hood and it's three quarter length and it's um, fleece. It was fresh and orange. And you know that he still brings that up. He oh. still wears it. And the guy told him the last time, last year, he said, "You gotta, you know, get rid of that thing." And he said, "No, look at." It. He said, "The zipper still works, but it's." <laughs> so that would be how, how old would that be? Yeah, a long yeah. time. Yeah, and he keeps saying they don't make stuff like this anymore. But I can remember my mom buying a hoodie from you, just a gray one, but it fit so well. It was like some of the hoodies. Our terrible shape oh, this yeah, day, but yeah. I can remember that one. But I remember my mom buying stuff from oh, you all the time. I remember your mom, yeah, yeah coming in. She was, yeah, yeah. always, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, things have changed well, for sure. Yeah. But.